Welcome. Um, welcome to How to Be a Superhero, the show. I am Michael Tomano, author of How to Be a Superhero, the book. And today I have a very special guest. Uh, his name is Louis Tomano, and he also happens to be my dad. So welcome, dad. Hi, Mike. Oh, thank you for inviting me. I'm uh, very happy to be here. Thank you so much for, for coming on. What, what a treat to, to get to interview my own father. Well, that's, this is going to be an interesting experience uh, for both of us, I think. Uh, for, for, for sure. For sure. Uh, so do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, about your background? Well, I guess, um, um, you know, all of my grandparents were immigrants from Italy. And uh, I was very fortunate really to be born into a very loving family. And I'm very, very grateful for that. Uh, I had a lot of love when I was growing up. Um, I had aunts that always remembered my birthday. I got cards, Christmas cards. I mean, uh, not so much Christmas cards, but birthday cards. And um, I had a lot of love growing up. And uh, um, I... Uh, uh, Went to uh, I went to Catholic schools. Uh, I had I had trouble when I was I guess one of the most significant events in my life actually was that uh, when I started school I went to a public school and um, uh, our school district kind of got in trouble um, because uh, you know they had it was organizational issues and originally I went to the city of Utica schools. And the district, the town that we lived in, changed to to a different school district. So my first three years were very uh, strange. Um, uh, my second grade, for example, was only half a year. I mean, half a day of school. Anyways, uh, uh, because of all that turmoil and whatever other reasons, that I ended up failing third grade. And uh, so my my parents uh, sent me, uh, put me in a public in a parochial school, and I did really well there. And um, so, um, uh, and uh, eventually, uh, uh, anyway, they, I spent my, my education in, in basically in a parochial school. And uh, after I graduated from college, uh, I went to the Peace Corps. I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Afghanistan for two years. After that, I, I came, um, uh, came, and when I came home, I attended uh, graduate school and I got a master's degree in physics. Um, I was uh, uh, I was in a PhD program, but at that time it was uh, basically uh, it, it, uh, 1971 it was after the the moon landing in '69, and the space program had turned down had closed down or was closing down. A lot of people were out of work, and uh, I realized there wasn't much. Uh, opportunity in in physics, so I um, uh, took a job in engineering at General Electric in Schenectady, and um, I I spent my whole career there. Had the opportunity to retire early, at age uh, 55, and um, uh, that gave me the opportunity to pursue my uh, uh, my my hobby, which was the figure skating. And I was able to um, uh, uh, compete, do some competition, and and uh, so that was quite an adventure. And also that uh, um, I uh, did some consulting. Actually, I subcontracted to the person who originally hired me at GE, and uh, we had quite a interesting business, and things went very well. And uh, and of course, uh, that's how how. Um, well, anyway, that's how, how we survive. So, so that's uh, uh, basically me. Uh, of course, I didn't talk about, you know, your mother, but, you know, if it wasn't for your mother, you wouldn't be here. Uh, but um, uh, so that's, that's basically my, uh, my story. That was a, a very uh, good summary, a very nice rundown. I'm, I'm notoriously bad for bad about it and adding I, I had too many details so I thought you did a, a really nice job of, uh, of of stepping through each stage of your life it was really neat and I, I I still remember one of the neatest things that you did was helping to, to design the generator for the uh for the submarine the seawolf 
That's right. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you noticed in the news, the um, USS Connecticut, which was a duplicate of the Seawolf, you know, ran into an object in the uh, Pacific Ocean in the South China Sea uh, recently, last week or, or so. So uh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. So the, um, the Connecticut has the same equipment, you know, that the Seawolf does, you know, it's basically it's a copy. Interesting. So, yeah. I remember too, uh, when we went to, I think it was Canada, you were showing me some of the, um, the generators that, that, they, that they did. And I think you, sh you showed me some of the generators at, at GE too. Yeah, well, I certainly remember the trip to Canada. We had the opportunity to, to uh, tour a nuclear power plant in, in Canada. Um, I can't remember uh, whether or not that the, the generator was the GE generator or not, um, but I think it was. Oh, I know that it had a uh, Canadian reactor, what they call the can-do reactor. But, um, uh, uh, and, and of course, uh, there was a, I, I don't know, I can't remember exactly whether you attended the Take Our Sons Week, uh, to, Take Our Sons to Work Day um, at GE or not. But uh, that may have been the opportunity for you to see the G uh, generators are in our factory. I know, do you remember the factory? I, I do, and and I actually remember um, bring your son to or bring your child to to work day, and because uh, I, I remember playing a uh, um, F sixteen Fighting Falcon on your on your computer at work. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> and uh, and I remember like the the tour, and uh, there was some conference room that we that we started out in, and. Um, I can't remember if they gave me something. I just remember that it was an enjoyable experience. Uh, and I remember getting to see a tour of the buildings and getting to see your, your office and you know, being really, I was really impressed by the size of the generators. Like they're, they're really big. And, and the fact that you helped design, you know, such a massive piece of machinery that's, you know, sh shooting out lightning you know essentially is is really fascinating well uh, yes uh, you know our, our customers um were utilities and uh, of course some of the largest generators were uh would, would have gone to a nuclear power plant and the the bore the inside of the of the generator is uh, large enough for for an average man to be able to stand up in it and, and uh, so um yeah, they're 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 quite large. It's it's absolutely incredible. And I remember uh, you have the the software programs that you, well, you linked a bunch of programs together so that you can actually test the generator, you know, just through the software and see if things are off, even just by you know a, a, like a fraction of a of a number. Because if they are, I remember you were saying that they would they would overheat. And that would not be good. That's right. Yes. Well, all that power, right? it doesn't take much of a mistake for, um, you know, for it to have a, a literal melt meltdown. Um, like we did have a case actually where we had a, a, a copper rainstorm where something burned up on test. And when you looked at, at the inside of the, of the machine, you could actually see uh, uh, copper raindrops, you know, the form, uh, pieces of copper in the form of a, of a raindrop. Oh my um, goodness. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's it's amazing how many things need to be exactly perfect to keep a machine like that going. Well, that's right. And but there's a lot of cases where that's also true. I mean, you know, uh, things that are the people take for granted, uh, like computers and, and uh, cars and, and everything. I mean, basically things have to have to work together. I mean, that's kind of life. That's very true. And certainly even the, you know, the human body and, you know, just about everything, right? Because if it, do if it doesn't, well, then you die. <laughs> well, you or, crash or, or fall apart or whatever. Right. Or I mean, hopefully, hopefully just have some problems that can be, you know, tuned up first, you know, before <laughs> completely exploding. But, you know, hopefully no, no copper rains. <laughs> well, I mean, but that's basically the issue with everything. Right. I mean, there's some, true. some things you can get away with, but, uh, you know, some, some things you can't. <laughs>
<laughs> right. Eventually, eventually things break down. Um, so I want to go into into some of your superpowers. I I I really find all this really interesting. And so um, I I think at the source of this, uh, one thing that I have always been really impressed with with you is your your analytical mind, and also your ability to retain information. Uh, you have such a good memory, and uh, people give me a lot of uh, um, props about my memory, but I I think yours is better than mine. Well, it's hard to to know, and of course, at my age. You know, my memory isn't very good. And I'm, I, you know, I realize that I'm starting to fail. Often I have trouble even remembering names and, and, and words, you know, English words, you know, that I used to, you know, used to be part of my vocabulary, I'm having trouble with. But uh, uh, I, uh, you know, I take notes and, and that's one of my, uh, Oh, well, I don't know if you call it a strength. Sometimes it bothers people that I take notes, but I do keep records and I have notes. I, I, I use a planner and that helps me remember things. And uh, um, it helps me to refresh my memory, um, you know, if I need to uh, look up something. So, you know, in other words, uh, that as I've aged, I've learned to develop certain skills to help me, you know, along, you know, tools or techniques or, you know, whatever you want to call them to, you know, aids to, to help me, uh, you know, do what I need to do. Or, so. so that's interesting that you, that you say that because remembering words and, and names is actually something that I really struggle with myself. And so I make sure to take notes as well. I, I have a composition notebook. Um, you know, and I try to get, if, if I can have people send me emails, if it's anything that's important that will need to be remembered. And sometimes I wonder if it's just because there's so many names and so much content that I've had to pay attention to that my brain just doesn't have, you know, room for it anymore, or, or doesn't want to like pay attention to, to more content. So uh, I'm not sure. Um, because I can, I can really remember lots of events that have happened, but when it comes to someone's name, even if they just told me it, a lot of times I, I can't remember it. Well, you know, that you have to develop these, these various techniques because, well, in, this, in today's world, you know, they call it the information age. Uh, you have to develop techniques because there's just so much information that you can't uh, re remember. Even if you're good at one thing, uh, you know, you're often not so good at other things. I mean, there are people who are very, very skilled at remembering names and faces and able, able to put them together, but then they have other shortcomings. So, you know, I mean, you have talents, everybody has certain talents and, and uh, you have to uh, develop techniques to, to deal with the things, particularly the things that you're not so good at, regardless of, you know, what, the, what, what it is. I think that note taking too is a really smart idea because that way you, you're not you don't you don't have to put any energy into into remembering it. Well, there is there is a technique about note taking. I mean, there are some people, for example, who will record almost everything verbatim without thinking, and you know that that's perhaps the opposite extreme. And those people. Uh, you know, they go to a meeting or whatever, and they don't, they have their notes, but they have missed the, the point of the meeting. You know, they, they, you know, they go away without understanding. So the, the issue, as I think, is, is first of all, learning how to listen and how to observe and, and to take a minimum number of notes, a, a minimal amount of notes, I mean. And uh, of course it helps to be able to make a diagram if, if you can. But, you know, these are all different techniques that, you know, that you develop over time. And, um, um, you know, and of course it depends on, on what your needs are and what, you know, what you're trying to do. I think that's really solid advice. Well, thank you. Well, I mean, that's, 
how I survived. Um, I do remember one case where I was uh, working on a, on a project and um, uh, I, I, I had identified something was, was wrong and I started investigating it. And my management knew, of course, that I was doing that. And, uh, but late, later in the day, I got a message uh, uh, from, my, from my manager. I was, I was out of town. And he said, the send me a report about what you find uh, as soon as you possibly can. So I just took my notes and sent it to him by fax. <laughs> and so that was my that was my report. And it turned out, of course, that some somebody else, an entirely different team, was uh, had had discovered something that was related to the problem that I was, you know, uh, that I was working on. So I mean that. So of course, it was the manager who who saw the connection between, you know, what I was doing and what the other people were doing. But and that was a case where I needed to produce a, a report very rapidly, and I just simply sent on my notes. So it, it's uh, I'm I'm really glad that you that you said that uh, because one of the things that I've really admired about admired about you is is your work ethic, and uh, and along with that your your honesty. Um, you have, so I guess, I guess it would be integrity. I think you have like great, great integrity. Well, thank you, Mike. That's perhaps the best compliment that anyone can receive. Um, I work very hard on integrity and, um, um, in our business, uh, it seems almost strange to say this now, but in our business, we were held to a very high degree of integrity. Um, uh, as, as you may know, or, uh, may have heard, you know, GE had some trouble, financial trouble, and it was based on integrity. And so that's very, uh, uh, disappointing, disheartening to us, me personally, of course, and to my colleagues, because we were held to a higher, much higher standard than our managers were. And so, so that's very uh, uh, disheartening. And uh, correct me if if I'm wrong. And if this is you know getting too in, into stuff that you don't want to talk about, then um, you know that's that's fine. But uh, um, if if I remember correctly, there were times that uh, you encountered people at work where they wanted that their integrity wasn't of the highest, and you had to kind of push through and um, shine the light on them. And, um, you know, they weren't necessarily su super happy about, um, you know, about that. Well, um, yeah, I guess that, that's true. I, I, I can't remember a, a particular case where I had to, had to really fight about it. Often I simply had to remind people or, or point out things, but um, I, I was, I was uh, aware that some upper management people were, were doing some things that were against integrity. And, and uh, uh, one particular manager, you know, effectively got caught and, you know, was, was demoted. Uh, and, and that may be the case that you're referring to. Um, that was, uh, 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 you know, that affected basically our whole business, you know, not just me personally, but, uh, because of my position, I guess I was perhaps more aware of the details of the deceptions that he was uh, involved with. And, and so perhaps uh, my frustration, you know, uh, carried on, you know, I perhaps brought that home to you. And um, of course, you know, that's, that's one of the problems, you know, that a parent has, you know, to, to try to avoid, you know, bringing problems from work, bringing it home. But um, you know, I guess that's that's also, um, you know, I mean, it's a fault also, right? I mean, to 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 you know to bring your problems home, because that yeah, was my problem, not your problem. Well, so um, yeah, that's it's 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 always uh, you know a very difficult struggle to manage the the internals, um, and so. As you know, that's that's a big thing that you know that I'm working on with 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 the book, um, and, and what I'm trying to help manage within myself too. 
Um, but so I I saw it because that's that's easily its own show, <laughs> and uh, um, I would love to to dig into that um, for sure. And it's very tempting for me to to jump into into all that because that's what I I really care about as well. But so um, I I was thinking of it as um, as a superpower, like the fact that you are so fearlessly honest and so um you know your integrity is you know um so steadfast that you know like even though there's cd situations you know like like you don't have any patience or time for it you know you just like like you cut right through it um you know you you, you like you, you take a you take a head on um and you take a, a lot of things that most people would be afraid to confront head on and i think it's because you're so honest uh, not only with other people, but I think um, with yourself too. Well, that's a lifetime struggle. I think um, honesty is very important. Uh, um, and before we go too far, that I certainly have made mistakes. Uh, I didn't make them on purpose, but you know, looking back, that it's easy to make a mistake. It's easy to um, uh, there's so many details that you can um, get clobbered so to speak, or you can, uh, you know, things slip by you, things that you don't necessarily see. But maintaining integrity, um, I, I believe, is very, very important. Um, the, the other side of it, though, uh, is in, in what I saw, particularly in my, from my experience in Afghanistan, is that it can make you enemies. And the, uh, uh, that, uh, you know, Afghanistan situation is perhaps the opposite side of integrity. But the thing is, is that when you point things out to other people and say, hey, you know, I don't think that's right, you're, you're exposing yourself to making an enemy. And I mean, some people, of course, people of high character will say, oh, thank you for pointing that out to me. But, you know, that's only a few people who will say that. Most people, you know, take offense. You know, they don't want to have their errors or whatever even being questioned. And, and um, so, uh, uh, you know, that's, that, that's an issue. Well, and, and so that's, it's so for exactly that reason that I am so impressed with how honest and how brave you are with your honesty, because, you know, I, I'm sure some people haven't been super happy with you when you've pointed things out. Well, of course, that, that's true. And, you know, I guess one of the things that I guess happened to me or that, um, you know, is, is the issue of, of praise and encouragement. You know, it's important for people to have praise and encouragement, uh, you know, particularly when they're young. But there've been cases where, let's say people, have given me perhaps too much uh, praise, uh, you know, for what I was doing. And then I realized that what I was doing really wasn't good enough to, uh, you know, to do what I needed to do. And, and then once I realized that it was really, it really hurt me. I said, you know, here I was told that I was good at this, but in fact, other people, people with whom perhaps I, I may have to compete with or, or have to associate with are so much better. And, and I think I would have been, I would have certainly have appreciated a more honest assessment of my situation. And I guess uh, I, I've kind of developed a, a saying that the, it doesn't matter really how good you are, it's a matter of how good you need to be. And, and, you know, of course, it de depends on, you know, what you're trying to do. But, um, uh, you know, there are, if, 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 if well, I mean, er everybody has, has a certain degree of capability. And, and, but if you're trying to do something that, you know, that you're short on, and, you know, you need to, to develop in order to, to, to reach your goal, well, you need to know that. You need to know where you are. Right. And, 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 you know, regardless, right. I mean, if you're going to, 
if you're going to take a trip, you know, you got to have an idea not only of where you're going, but you have to have an idea of where you're starting from. <laughs> right. And if, 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 if you don't know where you are when you're starting, then it's really hard to, you know, to find your trip. It, I, I find it really interesting that that you had that experience, uh, because for me, with Last Man Standing, which, as you know, was my, my first really big project as, as, a, as a team leader, where I was organizing people from all over the globe, I, I found that that praise uh, was was really not that helpful. Like, I, I mean, I guess it you know, helped to pad my ego a little bit, but um, it, 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 it really wasn't that helpful. What really helped me was constructive criticism. And so that's what I always look for. And uh, I, I came up with that with a motto that uh, constructive cr criticism is more viable than gold because it helps you earn more gold. That's right. Exactly. Good. Good for you. That's right. That's my point exactly. It seems okay. It's it seems like the um, the video just stuttered a little bit, but I, th I think you're still with me, right? Yes, I am. Okay. I, I, I didn't see I didn't see anything here. It's 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 just going out a little bit. Um like it just it, it just briefly paused for a little bit. Oh. So um so so it is it is um around uh, 10 30. I know that you wanted you, you know to try to keep it within a certain frame. Um how, how are you feeling? Well, I'm feeling pretty comfortable. We can go on if you like. Yeah, I, I would love to. I think this is incredibly fascinating. It's it's really neat to hear all these details of of your life that that I haven't heard heard. You know the 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 deeper stories. You know because I, I might have heard about some of it. You know as, as a kid, but as an adult, you know I get to understand it at a, at a different level. Well, of course, it's always the case. I mean, <laughs> yes. you know, you, you, I mean, I, I think no matter who you talk to. And you know whatever situation you're in, you'll find that that's true. Yeah, well, it's 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 a lot different, you know, hearing, well, e even advice, you know, as as a kid, and then you know, as an adult, like really understanding, like, oh, you know, like this is really how it was, and like, oh, I can relate to that. Like, I, you know, what I mean, like having the the parallel experiences. Right, right, and you know, if the more you talk to people, you'll find. That you know, people, uh, for example, of your age, if, you're, if you talk to your peers, you'll find, you know, people saying the same thing. You know, they they finally understand what their parents have been telling them and things like that. Yeah, I, so I think with with some of that too, it's it's really hard to understand. Uh, I don't know if the right word maybe would be like the context, because like uh, until you go through the experience, it's it's hard to to understand like what those words mean, if, if that makes sense. Um, that's right. That's right. And you know, I mean, you, you probably didn't realize it, but when you were growing up, you and your brother, we tried to give you as many different experiences as we could. And, and uh, you know, that's the reason why we, took, we went camping and we, we tried to take good vacations. I mean, you know, not just fun vacations, but well-aimed vacations. I mean, for example, the, the trips to uh, Canada and, you know, to expose you to a language and try to expose you to a different culture. And, and uh, uh, you know, as well as, for example, the trips to Hershey Park, uh, you know, I mean, that's more or less with a fun I mean, you know, that was in the category of fun. But, you know, I mean, if you can remember that often, like if we took a two week vacation, one, one week was in Hershey Park and another week was in Canada or another week was in camping. And, and uh, uh, you know, we, so we went to Maine. Remember, we went to uh, Acadia. You know, we went canoeing. We went to, uh, you know, we, we did different things. So that's what we tried to do. We tried to give you guys different experiences. Um, uh, you know, if you remember your class trip, you went to Italy um, on the, on the class trip, and and, uh, and then of course, you know, Boy Scouts. You know, we went we went to Sea Base, 
remember going to see base Absolutely. and uh yeah and you know the very and the various experiences uh, through boy scouts and through other things so so you know we we thought about those things and our those those adventures weren't random we had identified the need to do adventures and uh um uh you know i one 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 vacation we went to uh you know uh, uh, uh to the finger lakes region where uh one of my grandfather's sisters lived and uh you know you had the opportunity um you know you're you're small so you probably don't really remember but you had the opportunity to experience other members of the family and and they of course got to meet you so you know and then we did camping there and and um, but but the idea was to give you guys experiences and opportunities that uh you know as many different experiences as we could as we could think of so i've really come to appreciate those family trips as well as some of my favorite memories and adventures and as a motivator to get myself out a little bit more and it, things are a little bit harder with with covid but uh it's uh like being able to experience all those different parts uh you know of, of the country of, of the world um were, were really nice i mean quebec I still have such fond memories of, you know, the fort that was uh, on, was it, was it on the, on a river? St. Lawrence River, yeah, right. It was, it was, a, it was a, a, a fortified city, Quebec, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, it was a fortified city, and, and there was also the fort, too, right, um, that was, um, like, there was, like, a, a, a fort that had, like, like, the focus, like, cannons and stuff. Um, well, the, what were you so what you think of as the fort was was the center of the original city, and it was, oh. it was walled in. So you know the I mean the the city itself you know the original city, or the old city, you know effectively was was a fort, and and um, um, the 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 hotel hotel uh, Atam Atam Blue I think, Frotanak Frotanak I think. Was 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 a big hotel. It it perhaps would give the impression of being a, you know, like part of a fort. And perhaps that was the idea of the architecture. But but I think it's just simply a, you know, tall hotel. I'm pretty sure there was something on top of the hill that was there was because um, there was the main city, and then there was. A section of I just remember that it was like it was really green and it was hilly, but there was um, it was like a, a, a fortified part with um, with with cannons. Um, That's right. And, and so maybe it wasn't like technically you know like a like just like a dedicated fort, but I just remember that it was um, you know it, it was fort ish in the sense that it was fortified with with lots of weaponry. Like it, it was like one of the the main places like like where they would where the, where they would fight. Yeah, well, the place that you're you're talking about is, I think, is called the Plains of Abraham. Um, but the 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 issue is, see, see, Quebec is was built on a, on a cliff of the St. Lawrence River, and when the the British tried to take over Quebec, try to try to capture Quebec, they had to uh, um, uh, uh, they had to uh, uh, Climb those those cliffs, and they you know and they ended up on the on the uh, on that the field that you talk about, which is the plains of Abraham, and the the uh, uh, French general, um, uh, he decided to you know to attack him. So he you know he led his troops out of the fort basically, and to to. To fight the uh, the English, you know, who had just uh, you know climbed the cliffs and landed in that in that field, and 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 both both of those uh, uh, generals were were killed in that bat in that battle, and of course you know the British 
beat the French, and and that's why Canada is well became English rather than French. That's interesting, especially with the fact that Quebec is still largely French, but the rest of Canada is you know a little bit more English. Well, it's, it's all you know. In Canada, is 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 a bilingual country. But right, the the the, the province of Quebec uh, is is um, uh, is 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 primarily French speaking. I mean, even if people can speak English, their their native language, the first language is, is in many cases is French. Yeah, it, but that's it was, not true for the rest of Canada. Yeah, it, it was very interesting going from from Montreal to Quebec. And you know how right. how the, the language is like really really switched, right? Even though they're in the same province, right? And, and right, right next to each other. Well, they're they're different cities, right? You know, four hours apart, perhaps, but in the in the same province of uh, of Quebec. I mean, there's Quebec City in the Quebec province. Yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, I I find. Um, and that city was so gorgeous too. I remember that 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 a lot of it was uh like a uh, like stone like stone uh stone uh, pavement. Yes, right. Yeah, well, that's kind of reflecting the old part of the city. I think that's where we spent the most time, right? I, well, I remember we spent a lot of time, and there was like the street performers there. Um, I I really do remember a lot of the the family vacations, and I could actually probably talk for, for hours. I'm, I'm just all the different memories, uh, but like well, we, what would you say? Well, I would say, yes, I mean, we probably could, but I think that we're perhaps going into a somewhat of a tangent because what we're talking about is kind of more personal than of general interest. Right. It, it, it kind of, it gets a little exciting though, like uh, remembering all the different adventures of, of the vacations and and all the the different nuances of of the different places because uh, you know we also explored you know the opposite end of of North America with uh, California and you know there was the fort in 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 the, uh, San Francisco and uh, wow. we went to Yosemite um, we went to the um, I think it's the, the redwoods um, you know right. uh, 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 we spent a, a good amount of time in in, uh, in L A. And uh, I think one of the things that was really neat about the trips is not just the locations, but all the different people that I got to meet. I met so many people and made so many friends, uh, and you know, of of so many different, uh, I guess, walks of life or culture, uh, you know, however however you want to word it, but just like people that are living a different but similar life to myself. Well, good. I'm glad you 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 feel that way. Of course, that was our intent. And also, uh, if you remember the Afghan family that we uh, that we met, you know, and that we tried to help here in, in um, at home, and and uh, right, you know, we used to go to their house, and and you know, you you uh, met their, you know, you 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 played with you know with the children, you know, people your age, and. And, you know, you had that inter interaction also. Yeah, I think his name was uh, Mir Weiss. That's right. Very good. Yeah, I, I remember that. They had the, the place in a, a Skanktity. I think, um, is it Hamilton Hill? That's correct. Yeah, very good. Yeah. And, and um, uh, you know, as, as a matter of fact, well, basically what happened, you know, uh, as, as, they, as they grew up, you know, they, they moved to Arizona. But uh, uh, I happened to be in a barber shop um, one day, and and Amir Weiss uh, happened to come in, and he recognized me. I mean, I didn't recognize him, but he was all grown up, you know. I mean, I had I only seen him as as a little boy, but he recognized me, and uh, uh, you know, he and he, you know, he, he introduced himself, and he, um, um, uh, you know, and so we were able. To, then he filled me in, you know, on on. You know how the family had moved, um, you know, since they had seen him, and it was, you know, I don't, I, I, I'm not sure. It may, it may have been 20 years difference. Wow, I, I have 
That is that is incredible because I, I've always meant to ask you, you, you know, what happened with all that? Because we used to go like pretty, like at least it seemed like somewhat regularly, and then and then we didn't see see them much anymore. And so I was I was kind of wondering what happened. Um, sounds like things that things worked out for them. Well, yeah, um, I guess they did. You know, they of course they lived here and they basically became Americanized. You know, the children grow up as children do. And, you know, the girls got married and had their own families. And so, I mean, that's, you know, that's what happens, right? The, the birds leave the nest. Yeah, that's so great. Uh, because I remember that their situation wasn't super good in Hamilton Hill either, just that the area wasn't quite the best. So it's, um, you know, I'm sure an upgrade from Afghanistan, but, uh, um, you know, unfortunately, but um, um, I'm really glad that things worked out. That's, you know, I mean, what a, what a hard struggle that has to be, you know, like having to flee your country because the situation's bad and then coming, you know, living in a situation that's also like not so great here and, you know, just, but pushing through it and being able to, um, you know, do something better. And, uh, well, I guess that's a testament to you too, to, to helping them out, to showing them that, that it was possible. Well, you know, it's, it's a struggle, right? And my, you know, my, my uh, grandparents, you know, did that also, you know, that they, they left their country and they had to form a new life. And, you know, you know, the, these people, you know, the people particularly who are immigrants, who, you know, people who leave, you know, their own country or the original country and, and come to another country, uh, they have to make a decision, right? I mean, when they, when they come, they're, they're really making a commitment and they, you know, they're giving up everything they had right. to, and to come to this country. So, so these immigrants, these people, uh, become perhaps the best citizens of the country because you know because they're committed you know they've 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 really made a commitment as opposed to people that that are simply born here and didn't have to make that decision it's pretty much the the, the biggest commitment you could make because it's really just leaving everything your whole life behind and moving you know across the world Right. That's right. So I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't want to assume that it was an, an issue with them. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. But I think that by you helping them out, um, you help them with what I think is the most important thing, which is just being in someone's corner because um, it, it shows them that they have real worth and that they're important. Um, and I think that once you have that, then, then pretty much it, it just opens up the doors to everything else. So uh, I, I'm sure that you helped with that, at least in, in some degree. Well, um, yeah, um, perhaps it's a bit of an overstatement. And I think that the people, you know, once, once they're comfortable, then, and they have, you know, they're, they're, we weren't, we weren't their only friends, you know, they had, you know, there were other people who did roughly the same thing, you know, that we did. And, you know, in, in our country, we have, you know, uh, uh, some safety nets, you know, they had, uh, uh, you know, certain kinds of, of, uh, of aid. And, you know, they had people to talk to. And then, of course, they had, you know, other other Afghans, you know, who were here, you know, to talk to. I mean, it took time for them to meet, but, you know, eventually, you know, they build up networks and they build up a, uh, a set of friends. And, but that, you know, that part is not all that much different than somebody, well, you know, for example, you who, you know, left home and, you know, moved to a different city and you have to, you know, find your way around and meet friends and, you know, figure out where, where things are. Um, um, the uh, uh, 
I mean, the issue that they had, of course, was was language. Uh, the father could speak English, but you know the rest of the family couldn't, and so they had to learn a new language with a new situation. But it's also the same for you know for many many immigrants. Yeah. Um, I, well, so it is great that that they had a whole network and in a community. I I do think that even just the fact that that they knew that you were supporting them like i i think that little bit of care i i personally have found that it goes a really long way um and you know it, it's great if they had if they had other people too but i like i think uh, i know for me personally like you know each person that i have in my corner um you know it, it means a lot to me oh well, yeah that's true and you need, you need people in your corner. And I, I think that's one of the things that, that, you know, helped me with the courage to move to a new city. You know, first of all, like I knew that I had, I had Mark in my corner, you know, cause he lived here. And that was one of the, the main reasons why I picked uh, Gainesville. Um, you know, it, and I knew that I had, you know, the support of, of, you know, you and mom and, uh, um, and, and Dave and, you know what I mean? So I, I wasn't, you know, just, completely like jumping into the fire. You know, I, I, I did have a, a support system. You know what I mean? It, it's, I, I think it helps a lot. Yeah. Well, it does. There's no, there's no doubt about it. Right. Being, being lonely is, is very, uh, is very difficult. So yes, it's, that, that's very, that's very true. And I think um, that, uh, you know, that if you did a survey of people, that one of the things that they that they fear the most is being alone, being lonely. I mean, there's some people who really like being alone, but but I think the majority of people are really fear being alone. And and of course, people may not realize that. I mean, they you know they if they haven't thought about it, but but uh, uh, people if they're getting a situation where they basically end up. Um, you know, by themselves, they become very unhappy. Yeah, uh, loneliness, loneliness is is a really a uh, big and important subject. A lot of people feel alone, and uh, and a lot of times too, they can be surrounded with people and still feel lonely. So there's a really big difference too between you know being lonely and being alone um, and solitude. Um, you know I mean, cause like, cause I'm usually, I'm, I'm decently happy, like, like being by myself. Um, but you know, there's, there is sometimes, you know, the, the whole loneliness bit and, you know, even when I'm out with people, you know, like a loneliness and like, to me that that signals that, that there's something that I need to have a conversation with myself about, like there's something, there's, there's something that's, that's, a um, something off that needs to be. Uh, uh, addressed like something that that i'm feeling that i'm that i'm lacking that i need to pay attention to um but yeah that's a that's a very very important subject yeah it is and it's a it, it's, it's a long subject but perhaps also it's somewhat of a of a of a tangent from what we're from our topic from our topic isn't it, it it's so with these things too i think these are, are great food for thoughts like we definitely won't go um too deep into these um, but, um, thank you for, for bringing that up and, uh, um, cause this is, this is great notes for me to explore, uh, further as well. Uh, I do want to touch on, on, on one other superpower real quick. Um, and what I've really appreciated about you and your, your inspiration to me for this is the fact that you, uh, have kept up on your, your physical fitness, um, so much, I'm sure it's a little bit harder with. You know now with it being in you know you in new york and uh um and covid but uh um you know, the fact that you've kept in such good shape i i think is, is really impressive and inspiring to me well thank you mike i do uh try hard i still um uh, you know work on it the best i can you know i work with a little boy and um uh, uh you know when i'm with him uh, weather permitting we uh you know i 
take them out on a stroller ride and we go, um, you know, our, our, our typical route is, is, uh, is about three miles. And um, uh, sometimes we do that twice in a day, um, you know, and, you know, for example, we did that yesterday, um, see, yesterday, Sunday. So we did that, the three mile, well, we did it once on Saturday, we did it twice. And on Friday, we did it once. So, you know, I mean, you know, it's one thing to walk three miles, another thing to walk three miles pushing the stroller. <laughs> right. A big difference. So, so, some, some of which, of course, is uphill. And so anyways, you know, I, I do I do try and 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 I see part of that's part of the reason for 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 you know my my sports, my figure skating, um is in a, and 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 to try to encourage you guys to be involved with sports because sports help you with some of the things that we have already talked about. I mean, there, you know, some people think of sports as being a model for life, you know, all the, the different uh, disappointments, you know, the goal setting, you know, the, you know, how good do you have to be, you know, what are you trying to do, et cetera, et cetera, right? I mean, uh, that, it, you know, even, even if you're just simply uh, participating for fun, if you want to do something, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, you've got to have a certain, you have to develop a certain level of skill, a certain level of stamina, um, you know, to do that. And of course, you have disappointments because when you fail, you know, for example, and, 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 and you know, all the various interrelationships. So, you know, sports in, in many ways is, 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 is a uh, parallel to life, but uh, also that by being fit, it helps you to, um, I mean, helps, of course, your general health. But it also helps some of these other things, like how to deal with loneliness. I mean, you know, if you're if you're running or you're you know you're actively engaged in in, in, in an activity, it's hard to feel lonely, right? <laughs> and 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 uh, uh, you know some of the other issues you know that we've talked about. Um, I I completely agree. I think sports offer so many things, and uh, um, and not even necessarily being good at sports especially starting out i think too many people focus on well i'm not good at this sport i'm not good at that sport well uh, one of my favorite quotes is you know every every master begins a fool like i think it's more important to just get out there and and, and get active um and i i agree with with um that i was actually going to mention that too with, with with the loneliness um uh idea um because not only are you getting out there and getting fit and getting your mind going and, you know, um, you know, hopefully getting some sun and all that, but you're also meeting like-minded people, you know, people that are, that are playing the sport, you know, that you're enjoying as well, you know, so it, it helps you be part of a community. And uh, I know for me, um, it, it really encourages me to exercise outside of the sport. Whereas, you know, I'm not super excited to, to go for a run if, if I'm just going to go for a run, but if I'm, if I know that it's going to help me in, you know, my next ultimate Frisbee game, then, you know, I'm much more motivated to it. I was like, like, I got to do that run. And, um, cause you know, I want, <laughs> I want, I want to be better. And it's right. really, exactly. it's really, it's really interesting too, how often, you know, I, I like, ah, I don't want to go for a run. Like, I, I don't really feel that good today. Like I feel kind of tired or, or whatever. And, um, then I go for that run. And I just feel on top of the world. Like it, it, it completely changes um, how I feel. Um, and it's not even a long run. Like I usually just go for a mile, which is, you know, I, for me, it's, you know, it, it's, that's pretty quick. Not even, oh. I mean, like just a mile, a run, running a mile is a decent, is a decent um, activity. And I try to do it fast. So I, like, I don't just like, like take it easy. Like I'm, I'm, I'm really good for my, uh, um, for my six minute mile again. And actually I, uh, um, just actually right before COVID I, I was at, at uh, five and a half minutes. So well, I want to, I want to get that. I want to get that back. <laughs> so that's my motivation. Good. But, um, well, good for you. All right. Um, so I have, I just have uh, two more quick questions for you. Um, and so the first one is what do you think? my superpowers are well i think um you're 
you're you're really good at, at being able to relate to children, particularly middle school age children, which uh, I think uh, uh, almost everybody has a very hard time doing. So I'd say that is perhaps um, um, something that that's really outstanding for you. Uh, you know, people people really. Um, you know, most people really uh, uh, try to avoid or, you know, have a very hard time dealing with, um, you know, the middle school age children and, and the fact that you can relate to them um, and, and that you can um, uh, talk to them uh, in, in, in a form, in a, in a way that they appreciate. Uh, I think that that's a real uh, significant talent uh, that um, uh, that you do, and and the fact that uh, the second thing is that you have a um, uh, a good attitude, a general generally good positive attitude, and and um, uh, uh, I think that that's a big uh, 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 a big quality. The perhaps to say it, you know. Um, Maybe in somewhat of a, of a different way, you know. Well, uh, you know the scene from Scott, the Scott Hamilton. If I can, I guess I probably have to paraphrase it because I can't remember exactly the words. But it says the uh, the greatest uh, disability is a bad attitude, and um, uh, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if, it, if that's exactly how he says it. But the thing is, is that you know if you have a bad attitude, that that that's really a that's a, that's that's perhaps the worst disability you can have, and and uh, um, so. But in your case, you are, you have a good attitude, and you help other people get a good attitude. Um, that uh, that that's uh, uh, your big big qualities. Those two those two things particularly that um, um, the, say that make you outstanding. Well, thank you. And I think that Scott Hamilton uh, quote is is really important. And I like the idea that um, you know attitude is really the only thing that we can control, and you know and 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 how we how we react to, to things. Right. Um, all right. So so last question for you. Um, um, do you have any any tips for for our um, our budding superheroes or or any insights that you would like to to give? Anything that you've learned through your life that would be useful to people? Well, I guess uh, I would say that the first thing is, is, is to realize, um, as I said before, that it's not so much uh, how good you are, it's how good you need to be. But uh, perhaps even more important than that is to dream, to try to think big. And um, to uh, to and then from by by dreaming and trying to think big, then establish goals. And after you establish goals, to establish a plan to to reach those goals. As um, as the, the saying goes, uh, I believe it comes from the Little Prince. But the saying goes is that um, a goal without a plan is just a dream. But you still have to have some kind of a dream, some kind of a vision of the future to, um, uh, to, to, you know, to establish your goals. And, and then, of course, goals lead to plans, and plans lead to action, hopefully. And the question that everybody has to answer that everybody answers in their life is you know what, what is what is their purpose in life and people often you know they're not able to articulate what that is what the answer to that is you know it's, you know if you ask somebody well what is the purpose of your life what do you you know what what why why are you what 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 is what is the meaning of your life many people can't answer that but everybody actually does answer that by what they do. And in other words, someone mm. looking 
at their life, you know, for example, their biographer, somebody um, even who reads, for example, their obituary, you can, you can say, well, they did this, they did this, they did this, and effectively their actions define what their values are. So, uh, uh, so what you do, as, as uh, uh, someone said, um, that uh, you know what you do speak so loud that you can't hear what they say. What they what, what a person does effectively announces to the world what their values are. That is very powerful. That is very powerful. And uh, one quick thing I, I want to mention too is you know when when it comes to anything that people want to accomplish, there's you know, I, I found with my personal experience, like there's really that, um, you know, almost nothing that's off the table. Like people, like if, if people want to do something like there's, you know, like you're really the only thing that's, that's stopping you from accomplishing pretty much anything. Um, because I mean, I, I never would have thought that I, you know, all the, all the different things that, that I just tried, you know, playing around that I ended up doing, you know, doing well. And, uh, you know, I never, I never really would have thought like starting out that, um, that those were attainable things. Well, you know, I, I take a little bit of an exception to that, but, but the, the, there are things that perhaps, you know, that are simply out of, out of the realm of possibilities. But the thing is, is that if you analyze those goals, that you'll see perhaps elements of those things that you can realize. For example, that if you know your your goal is say to to go to the moon, to be an astronaut and go to the moon. Well, okay, only a small number of people can actually do that. But as you say, well, why do you want to go to the moon? What what are the you know what what is your motivation? I mean, do you, do you like being at heights? Do you like adventure? Do you like excitement? Do you like being risking your life? I mean, there are other ways to meet those needs or those goals or those whatever thrills, um, you know, without actually going to the moon. So, you know, I mean, which I think is closer to your point. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I think that's a, a really, I, I, so that's another definitely superpower of, of you is to be, uh, you know, able to see like, like the different sides of different perspectives. And, uh, um, um, you yeah, know, I, I find that really useful because, you know, sometimes like, 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 like being able to see different, like you're able to see like different angles, like both like the pros and the cons of, 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 of different ideas and concepts. Which I find really helpful. Well, when you're an engineer, you have to do that. Yeah, and um, yeah, so that that self in introspection, I think, is is really really important. Um, and uh, so this is something that I that that I want to dig deeper on too. Um, like not not for uh, you know the start of this conversation, but just thinking about because. Um, you know, my, my dreams for, for last man standing and for, you know, my other projects, like they weren't, they weren't really big dreams. Like I wanted to, you know, just create like for last man standing, I just, I just really wanted to create something that was, was fun, like fun to me and, and fun for my team and hopefully other people would like it. And, um, you know, before I knew it, you know, we were getting in all those big magazines and, you know, we got the big award for, um, you know, being the best in the world for, for its category and, um, you know, all the other awards and, um, I was getting all sorts of calls from uh, companies um, that, you know, that that wanted me to to do to do work for them, um, and so it's just it's and that's stuff that I never would have thought that would have been possible. And like I and I wonder if it's good. Like I, I don't know. It's it seems like there's a lot to think about with that because I'm not sure if it, I, I'm not sure if I had actually dreamed of that goal if it would have happened. Like I, I might have. Um, like crush myself under the weight of um, of that pressure because I mean that that's a, like if I had actually said to myself all right well you know I want to get my game in in all these magazines and have all these awards and whatever 
like the weight of trying to accomplish that probably would have crushed it. But like being able to take like those, those baby steps and, you know, just growing like little by little by little, um, and having my dream more of just creating something fun. Um, and same thing with, you know, with sandbox, you know, that, that, that program, I don't know if I mentioned it to you, it's being used in hundreds of schools all over the world. And, um, I've gotten so many emails from, from different teachers that have said, that it's changed their students' lives. And for me, it was just creating something for my kids so that they had something more than the Windows Paint to use to, to create with. I want them to be able to create stories. I was like, oh, I'll just put it online to see if, if other people find it interesting or useful. And, um, <laughs> you know, they did. Yep. Well, that's how it goes, right? You got you to start someplace and you got to do something. Perhaps that's another point is, is you got to do something, right? You just can't just, uh, I guess, uh, as, as I said, you know, about dreaming, you got to do more than dreaming, you know, you got to do something. And, and, and sometimes it works, you know, it works the other way also, is that by doing something that's, that helps you to, to dream, that helps you to see what other things are possible. Yeah, right, right. And so I guess I would amend what I said by what you just said, that you have to also start someplace to, to, to dream, to get an idea of what's, what's possible and what kind of goals, you know, you want to set for yourself. I really like that with the with with the taking action because then it takes kind of the intangible dream and and makes it tangible like it makes it it makes it real and it becomes real and then you actually you really see w what it is like you know what I mean it's not just a dream yeah and it, yeah it really it isn't just a dream like you've like even if you've only accomplished like like point zero 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 like one percent it's still like you know it's it's the first step forward to it you know what I mean like you've you've, you've made progress. Right, right, and it goes and it goes both ways, right? I mean, you, you as, as as I think you pointed out, I mean, you got to start. Once you start, then you you may say, well, you know, that's not really what I want to do. I want to do something else. Well, but it, it's that information that you get by you know by by trying something and say, well, you know, I don't really like this. I want to do something else, and or you get a new idea, and so I mean, that's how that's how life is. But but on the hand, you got to do it, right? You got to start. You know, right. you got to get in motion. I, you know, if you if you remember like skiing, right? You know, if you're you know once you which you're on top of the hill and you're looking down, and and <clears throat> you know the only, and the way you know if if you go straight down, you know it's not long before you crash, right? But so you got to turn. But the only way you can turn is to get moving, right? And once you which start moving, then you can make that first turn. And then, and you know, and then you're in control. Then you're in control of your speed. It's that's it, cracking me up a little bit because it's it's reminding me, especially of uh, Maple Ski Ridge, where you know what I did do is just go straight down. I don't know right. if you if you remember how much I enjoyed doing that, but I just you know all all the, all the big hills, um, you know, I I just went straight down and. Uh, but that didn't work out so well for me when I tried to do that on the double diamond at Gore. All right. You got to you got to get going. You got to get moving though. You got to you get you got to start moving in order to make that first turn. And after you make the first turn, then you can control your speed. Right. Yeah. And so yeah, that's a good point too, because you know I I didn't start out going straight down. You know I had to learn. I had to learn how to how to maneuver and you know control my skis and be able to avoid the other people that aren't going straight down and um <laughs> but then like once i once i got the hang of all that then i could go straight down because there was that i don't know if you remember there was that really long um path at maple ski ridge that i think it had the chairlift i think it had like it actually had the chairlift like versus the uh, um the, the rope toe um yeah. and um man i i loved going down that straight down it was just it was so it was just straight and um i could just go so fast and had like that really long part where i could coast um good times but, okay well yeah um dad thank you so much for for coming on today what what a treat to get that get to interview you well it was my pleasure it was a pleasure yeah thank you so much absolute pleasure for me too um all right. Uh, thank you so much for, for tuning in today, everyone. Um, I hope you have a great day and a great every day. Um, take care. Okay. Bye.